I've been talking about what's going on with Iran for for a little bit here, and I'm going to continue to do so. And I do apologize if you're a regular viewer and some of this information is uh, repetitive, but it is important to talk about because, you know, corporate media isn't really talking about it. Uh, so it's up to comedians um, and <laughs> content creators and assholes their cars to fucking uh, point, point stuff like this out. Counterpunch has been talking a lot about this. Um, there's lots of great journalistic outlets that have been covering Iran. The Gray Zone was, was big on covering what was going on with Iran. So uh, recently, uh, Mike Pompeo has, you know, the, the Trump administration has basically decided that they're going to put new sanctions on Iran every single week till Trump is out of office. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're looking at, what, 12 to 15 new sanctions uh, put on Iran um, during a pandemic that is preventing them from getting uh, medical supplies and really putting their full weight behind social programs to help their people. Uh, And regardless of what you think about Iran, um, what America is doing with economic sanctions, this economic warfare, um, is shameful and uh, should be, um, you know, protested and uh, declined by the American people. Because I will say this, so Pompeo called for snapback actions. That's what he calls it, snapback actions, uh, in saying that we need to put more economic sanctions on Iran uh, because, you know, they're, they're, they're a, 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 what, a, what did John Bolton say? Troika of tyranny. Uh, you know, and there, they, he said this at the UN Security Council, and he was expecting all of these European countries to come out and basically be like, "Yes, fuck Iran, everybody, let's let's join together in the genocide of another country. Let's use economic warfare to gaslight the American people into approving another war." Um. Uh, by saying, oh, look, these guys are so terrible. Look at the condition that these people's lives are in because this government is so evil. When in reality, it's not their government that's evil. It's American, the American government that's evil that puts economic sanctions that doesn't allow them to get the relief and the aid and the funds that they actually need to take care of their own. So really, who's the bad guy in this situation? Especially during a global pandemic. <laughs> So, uh, you know, Pompeo got some backlash for saying there these economic sanctions or snapback European countries that are like, no, we don't want to fucking do that. Are you crazy? Uh, and Pompeo was like, have you met me? Uh, I'm America's deadliest care bear, bro. So... There's basically no country there right now that wants to participate in economic sanctions except for America. We love it. We put, I mean, we put economic sanctions on Venezuela. Although Venezuela uh, is is still doing better than America despite American economic sanctions. And what this goes back to is that Iran nuclear deal, right? So in 2015, you had uh, the U.S. in conjunction with the EU, Russia, and China... France, Britain, uh, they all uh, basically used economic sanctions as a leverage to get Iran to sign this nuclear deal saying that they won't have, uh, they, they won't develop a nuclear program, that, they, that they, they're they basically going to curtail the amount of uh, enriched uranium that they can have within their country, uh, stockpile within their country, and, you know, Iran was going to abide by this, and in, in return for doing doing that... Um, Iran would then get uh, get the funds that they that that they rightfully deserved it too. So so essentially, the economic sanctions were put on as like a hostage negotiation. That's what the that's what the nuclear deal was. It was a hostage negotiation. And again, I want I want to note that you know Russia and China, two countries that are now seen as as our our, our mortal enemies, were part of this deal. Now, 
the the reason why these funds were so important was because the IMF and uh, uh, you know a lot of the monetary systems, um, the, the central currency that they use is the American dollar. On an international level, that's the the, the American dollar is the central currency that is used, which means um, when it comes to economic sanctions, uh, you know America can dictate what goes and what doesn't. So. Part of the reason why I think Trump wanted to pull out of um, th- this Iran nuclear deal uh, was so that you, we could impose more sanctions on them. You know, um, because w- without the deal, then you know, what what reasoning do they have to continue putting economic sanctions on Iran? Uh, and and part of that was also to goat Iran into a physical combat, into an actual war. Right into a hot war with Iran. That was in the Trump administration because you have people like John Bolton, Pompeo, um, uh, John Kelly. These are all these are all people that that want that hot war. That that think that war is good for the economy and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, and we saw in last July, it was basically the uh, uh, like this fake reason to try to go like a, a U.S. drone. Was was spotted in Iranian waters and like, you know, it was just another. They were just trying to make another Vietnam happen, and if we go to war with Iran, like, that's going to be catastrophic. It's not going to be like Iraq or Afghanistan. Then you had the assassination of General Qasem Soleimani, who was on a peace mission in Iraq. Um, and uh, his, he was killed. He was assassinated. Now, this this whole thing where America is telling what other countries, how much nuclear, uh, you know, uh, technology other countries can have, uh, it's kind of bogus because. What country in the history of mankind has actually used nuclear weapons? I'll give you a hint. America. In the entire history, since, we did, since the nuclear bomb was developed, America used it twice. Twice. So what's this fear? Shouldn't the rest of the world be afraid of America at this point? That America might use nuclear weapons on them, considering that we've already fucking done it? Where are those sanctions? <laughs> for for people, to, people to look at America and go, uh, hey, maybe we should curtail you on your nuclear developments. Seems like you guys are a bit aggro. Now Biden is going to come in and try to re-implement the 2015 uh, Iran nuclear deal, and he claims that he's going to offer a path to diplomacy to Tehran. Uh, and again, the question remains: Why is America the arbiter of nuclear weapons? And if you're really going to be this advocate for peace, then why is Joe Biden not talking about global nuclear disarmament? Wouldn't that be the the it, you you really want to show how mu- how different you are from Donald Trump? Then he, here you go. This is a major way you could do it, but Biden won't because Biden's as much of a war hawk in the pockets of uh, war profiteers as as anyone else. Uh, so you know he's going to offer them that and say, well, we'll take off any sort of. So he'll take off the sanctions if they sign on to the deal, right? Um, If they sign on back to the nuclear deal, he'll take off the sanctions that is restricting medical supplies. Again, this caveat that comes into play, right? Instead of being like, you know what? We're in a global pandemic. These people are suffering, much like the people in my own country, and I should do something to help them out. 
you know what, I'm going to lift the, the sanctions that prevents them from getting their necessary funds to run their social programs uh, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, sanctions on medical supplies so that they can take care of their people. And then we'll talk about other sanctions. Well, maybe we'll talk about the ballistic sanctions that are on Iran because, uh, because of the nuclear deal. Maybe, maybe that'll, that'll be the caveat instead of, uh, you know, uh, funding social programs, uh, funding the, uh, medical supplies. Uh, why is that the caveat? And why is that? Why are we made to think that because Joe Biden is coming in to make this deal that he is a good guy in all of this? He, he is still holding the people of Iran hostage in order to get what he wants on a political level. That's not what a good guy does. Now, again, I'm not saying Iran is a perfect country. Iran has committed some human rights violations. They, they also support Hamas. Uh, Soleimani's uh, people, I believe, uh, supported Hamas, uh, you know, and um, that, that they, America put some sanctions on. But fucking we fund. The, the, again, the United States funds terror groups. We funded the Taliban. We're, we're, we funded both sides in Syria. Wait, you think we're 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 making billions and billions of billions of dollars on on weapons just cuz? No, it's cuz we're selling weapons to both sides. And as far as human rights violation goes, America commits their its own laundry list of human rights violations. Fucking, we have a human rights violation going right now in, in terms of extraditing Julian Assange. If you want to criticize other countries about human rights violations, maybe you shouldn't be committing them in your own. The police brutality issue and the complete ignorance of the people as they march on the streets asking to fundamentally change the police system should show you how much we don't care for that shit. Yet, we have politicians that are like, no, 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 let's give them more money. Let's militarize them even more, but train them to be nice about it. Yeah, no, that's still, you're still committing human rights violations. Under Obama, during DAPL, there were human rights violations when the cops used fucking water cannons and sound cannons and beat protesters and journalists. We have people in prison right now uh, at the age of 80 because they were Black Panthers. Because they believed that, that they could create a better society outside of government uh, or racist government that doesn't give a shit about black people or brown people. How about that for a human rights violation? We executed Fred Hampton because he was bringing together various different communities. The FBI executed him. The Chicago police executed him, but under you know the FBI was behind that. That's a human rights violation. The execution of a, of uh, 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 the leader uh, or one of the leaders of a movement. Assassinated MLK, assassinated Malcolm X. I mean, how are these not human rights violations? There's millions and millions of people. There's fucking food lines right now. America isn't feeding its people. Nancy Pelosi is worried about whose name is going to be on the fucking check. Who gives a shit? Joe Biden wants them to sign this nuclear deal or else he won't give them aid and medical relief. No, if you want to be a good guy and differentiate yourself from the Trump administration, let that shit go. Remove those sanctions. Economic warfare is still warfare.
but we're supposed to look at Joe Biden as a good guy because he wants to re- have Iran rejoin some fucking nuclear deal where it stifles them. And then people are like, oh, well, th- this is preemptive measures, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Well, shouldn't they be taking preemptive measures on, on uh, American nuclear development? Considering America is the one that has a uh, predilection to fucking use these weapons? If you want to sit there and be the shining beacon on the hill, then you should live what you preach. You want to talk, Joe Biden and, and the Democrats want to talk about human rights, yet they violate human rights on a daily basis. I just listed all uh, a, a shit ton of them, so don't don't ask me to be like, but how? Like, no, go, rewind the fucking video by two minutes and you'll fucking hear me scream about it. Really, where are the sanctions on America for committing human rights violations against their own people? And I'm not saying punish the people. That's what economic sanctions wind up doing, too, by the way, is they they usually end up punishing the people. What I think we need to do is put economic sanctions uh, on American elites. All the politicians, the hundred millionaires, the fucking CEOs, these jackasses that sit there if people like in fucking Walmart that are the, the Waltons that are like, oh man, we need to, can, can somebody help our employees? Oh, we're going through such a tough time. Oh, you have millions and billions of dollars, you fucking frauds. There's the sanction right there. Half your wealth goes to your, goes to your employees. Half of it. And if you don't, we'll take 90%. And then whatever's left, we'll tax that at another 90%. There's that economic sanction. If you're not going to do good by your employees, boom. That's an economic sanction that we're going to put on you. But instead, who's, who, uh, the American people are the ones that have the economic sanction put on them. That's why we're in fucking food lines. That's why a lot of people don't have health care. Hospitals are getting overrun. A lot of people can't afford a $400 emergency. Put the economic sanctions on the fucking elites. And then see how quickly these people change their minds on economic sanctions. This, I mean, this is, Biden is just going to enact more Cold Wars. That's, that's really what he wants. He wants to put these sanctions on them and put caveats that, you know, essentially, it, like, this deal is not good, good for Iran. You're holding their money hostage. You're holding their, the citizens of Iran hostage because you you want to be some fucking political white knight. You're not the good guy in this. All right, uh, this is our last story for the day. Um, I gotta take a drink of water after I, I yelled about that. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.